Hello there. Once again, this is Anton from Antonio Bay. Thank you for stopping by the collection room. Um, it's been a, quite a while since I've been in the collection room, actually. Um, this last week or so, uh, we did some traveling. Uh, so I recorded a bunch of videos in advance and just had something to post while we were gone. Uh, we did some traveling back to Nebraska, which I don't normally go to. But every time we do, which has only been twice now, uh, we stop in a place called Liberal, Kansas. Uh, which, that has the door, the Wizard of Oz Museum, of all things. But they also have an Ollie's, and that's why we stopped there. Because we love Ollie's. And uh, because we travel with a dog, we take turns going into Ollie's. But uh, uh, I, I just love seeing what they have. It's the only Ollie's I've ever been to, and they don't have them very often. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with Ollie's, it's a, like a retail outfit that sells like factory seconds. But mostly it sells overstocked items or stuff on clearance. And I was shocked by the sheer quantity of DC Comics uh, trade paperbacks there. There was a ton. Uh, a few, like a week back, I put up a short uh, that was just like one shelf. There was like two or three shelves clear full of DC Comics uh, trade paperbacks. Which is kind of telling me that uh, these were not that popular. Or I would have thought they would have been popular, but they did not sell very well. Uh, the fact that these were just piled, I mean, they were all over in there, uh, tells me these were not as hot a commodity as maybe they had hoped that they would be. And I don't know, I've kind of read through some of them and I kind of, I see why they were in Ollie's. Uh, these are comics that would have come out in 2013, 2014, what I would consider modern comics. I know that's almost 10 years old now, but to me that's still new books, like New comics end at, at 2021. That's, or, no, 2000, 2001. Um, anything after that is new, and I basically don't collect it or read it because I don't think it's any good. However, I do love me some Harley Quinn, so I thought I'd grab these, and <clears throat> I, I did kind of read through a lot of these while I was traveling, and uh, uh, I know why they're on clearance. And this book uh, was $3.99 for the first trade paperback of Harley. The original price would have been $17. They were not getting that out of it. And I'm not I'm not going to like bash on all the modern writing and bullshit that they do. But uh, just something about it. It's It doesn't appeal to me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a crudgety old man apparently. And this modern era stuff just doesn't really float me. And, you know, some of the art is good. Some of the story is good. I prefer, I don't know, this this New 52 Harley is not probably my favorite take on Harley anyway. But, I mean, some of this art is great. You got the old, uh, what's his face? You can see his mustache under the thing. So, I, I mean, I get a kick out of some of it. Don't get me wrong. And Roller Derby Harley is one of my favorite Harley Quinn action figures, like ever. But I don't know, it's just, it's it's more violent and calloused and, I don't know, some aspect of it doesn't, doesn't reach me like older comics and I'm not into it. Like I said, some of the art on the covers is still great, but a lot of it I'm just not into. Um, but it is kind of silly. I mean, this is a this is a popular character, or so I'm told, and it's a beautifully done trade paperback. So why is it three ninety nine, and why is there you know four hundred of them in all these? Uh, so here's volume two, another one. This is DC Universe Rebirth. I'm assuming it's just more of the same series. This was also three ninety nine. I just snagged them because they were real cheap, and I thought. You know, it'll keep me give me something to read and flip through while we're riding. Uh, it was like a like a sixteen hour drive. It was, a, it was a long drive, but yeah, just not really not really wild about them. The art is good. Just something. This stuff with the modern storytelling just doesn't doesn't click with me. And I hate how they tried to make Harley be. Basically, like the girl Deadpool is my take on it. Uh, here's another one. It was three ninety nine. Uh, Harley with Power Girl. I actually have her figure of this. I 
Uh, it's not that I hate the character. I'm just not wild about these books. But apparently I'm not alone in that opinion because otherwise there wouldn't be hundreds, hundreds of them at Ollie's, which just blows my mind. Because these things were not cheap originally. Um, I'm not sure. This is Power Outage Volume 2. So this is Power Outage Volume 1. I don't know. That's Hot Time in the City. I don't know. I thought I had a pretty good run of these, but I might be wrong. Uh, it looked like a lot of them tied together, which I appreciated, but... I think there was only a, a couple of gaps in the whole series. Like, I love this this action figure. This is a beautiful Harley Quinn figure. The Space Harley. I mean, that was one of my favorites. I actually bought mine from Shardimus Prime. Um, got him to sign the box and everything. Gave me a business card from Russ. So, uh, yeah. I've always, always loved that Harley. What's up, you guys? Sure was, yeah, <clears throat> don't need to do it in my impression. Anyway, uh, you see a lot's going on in here. Very colorful. I remember this head. Like, they they made the figure, one of the figures with this head. And you could attach that giant sad head on. Which, you know, I never knew where that came from until I flipped through this and realized that's where it came from. I also have a soft spot for Power Girl. I've always thought she was pretty cool. Just a variant version of Cara jor -El, So, um, This was a, just another weird one. This is a hardback. Uh, they had a couple hardbacks. This, sadly, uh, was also $3.99 for Harley and Ivy meet Betty and Veronica. And I was like, wow, $3.99? This thing's like amazing concept. Amazing concept. In reality, not as cool. I think they actually end up switching their bodies and not actually like meeting. I didn't really flip through this one much because it was a little, oh, by this point I was starting to get car sick from reading in the car, but, and I kind of, kind of burnt out on the other ones. Um, last Harley book I got was, and that is a lot of Harleys, that's, that's like six Harley Quinn books, uh, was this Harley Quinn, A Rogues Gallery uh, cover art collection. And this one was actually, uh, this was originally $24.99. I paid $7.99 for it, or $6.99, yeah, $6.99. Nothing was over $7. Uh, $6.99 was like seven bucks, and it was wrapped in a nice plastic. And all it is is covers. It's just, it's like a whole bunch of Harley covers. And I thought that was cool because, you know what, I love cover art. And I thought, you know what, I would love to have that. I would love to show that off. It doesn't have all of the issues and everything on top. But I thought, you know what, some of these are really good. And I thought, if nothing else, you guys would appreciate that as well. Just kind of a, just a gallery of all these good Harley covers. See, this just looks like, I don't know, in my opinion, that's like a Deadpool thing to do. And uh, I'm not a big fan of Deadpool, so the more you try to make Harley like Deadpool, the, the less I'm going to like it. Because uh, there is some similarities to the character, but not like you'd think there should be. I was like that. Chris Cho cover, or Frank Cho cover. I hated this outfit. I liked the old original classic one better. Yeah. So if you're if you're big into Harley, this would be of all of them, this was the my probably my favorite purchase of the Harley Quinn stuff. Uh, just because it, it's got all the covers, so many variations on different themes here. And a lot of them just tell a little story. I appreciate them. Got some pages that want to come apart. That looks like a Fortnite poster. Which, you know, if you guys don't know, 
okay, you know I play Fortnite, but uh, there is two Harley, or no, there's two different Harley Quinn skins in Fortnite. I own both of them, and then there's like two variations for each skin, so there's a lot of Harley Quinn in Fortnite if you want it to be. I always liked this Wizard of Oz looking cover. Harley Quinn in the skull bags. Did not like Suicide Squad. Watched it. Tried to like it. Wanted to like it. Absolutely couldn't freaking stand that. I did not like that film. I was just like, what a load. So of course, the uh, first film we ever put Harley Quinn in. Or, yeah, was it Suicide Squad? Yeah. It's just, it wasn't good. I didn't like it. I didn't even try to bother to watch uh, Birds of Prey. Mm -hmm. Ironically, the old TV series Birds of Prey wasn't terrible. And it had a fairly decent Harley Quinn in it. Either that's real or I the fever is pretty prominent here and I am not remembering things correctly, which could be a possibility. This this is a very, very substantial illness that I'm feeling today. Jumbo Mecha Suit Harley Quinn. Yes. That is a thing that should be. Harley Quinn succeeds. Yes. Am I going to go through every page of this book? Yes. Because there's just too many cool covers in it. And it's like every page I turn is like a fresh issue I'm looking at. And it's good. Some of these are just good. There's my space Harley that I love so much. See, I originally had the, the first series of Harley Quinn that DC put out. I had that, and it was quite good. Uh, enjoyed it a lot. The New 52 stuff and the Rebirth stuff. Basically anything since then. Uh, this, this. Not. Not written for me, apparently. That's a good sharp looking cover. It's a weird angle cover. Black and white. Cartoony cover. I have caught bits and pieces of that one cartoon she's in, and I also do not like it. This is from her first series. This is the series I had. Um, it was pretty good. Uh, that was 2000. I did not finish it out. I, I think I only got about, about a year into it. 2001 was pretty much uh, a hard wall for me in comics. Um, it just It all died out for me. And then, like, years later, I just got into back issues. That's what I do now. And finding a good deal. And I thought this book was a good deal. Look at that. That's a comprehensive list of all the covers. So, anyway, this. I, I definitely recommend this. 170 classic covers. 25 years of Harley Quinn. I thought that was very nice. And it's But it's, it is oversized. So, it is bigger, like, than... Like, that's a comic book size right there. I'm sorry, that's just out of view. It sticks out that much taller. So, if you are if you got a limited shelf, you might want to be careful with that one. The only other thing I bought was I spent a little bit more money on this one. Uh, the Silver Age Supergirl Volume 1. They had a few of these. They had a whole bunch of Doom Patrol. Like, like I don't know, like 150, 200 Doom Patrol. Silver Age Doom Patrols. And I was like... Uh, no thanks. Uh, I don't think I want that at all. But I do like, I do love me some Supergirl. This is all, uh, Silver Age stuff. Pretty basic panels. Cool art. Bright colors. But also very simplistic. And very dense. Like, like, I didn't even crack into this one. This one will take, you know, probably, this will take like years to read for me. I'm not going to be able to read it all at once. I'll have to do small small bites and do occasional story here. 
Um, Golden Age and Silver Age stuff, though I love the format, is a little bit boring and a little bit odd for me to really, really... It's, it's a chore for me to burn through. Um, I'm a Copper Age guy to, to 80s and 90s. Uh, modern, but like this brand new stuff, it's, it's just not me. I, I, I know my era, I know what my tastes are, and I try to generally stay right there. Even though I love the art <coughs> and the appearance, you know, the format, the story, everything, uh, I do find the reading is a little bit one-dimensional. I mean, it's not like super in-depth, a lot of it, and so that is my take on some older comics. Some of it, like the horror stuff, can be extremely deep, but uh, not a lot of not a lot of the superhero stuff seemed as interesting to me in Golden and Silver Age. That's just me. Feel a little bit bad saying that because I do I greatly honor these eras. They're just not my era. They were before me, and so my tastes are going to require what came after. However, I also know where my age stops. That would be with the modern era. So anyway. That, I'm going to lean her up right there. That's pretty much what I got. Um, I think total I spent like $30, $35 at Ollie's. Plus I bought an action figure. So I probably spent like $27 on this stuff. Which I didn't think was bad at all for the sheer amount of uh, hardbacks that I got. Hardbacks and thick trade paperbacks. So. Anyway. That is my take. That is my story. Thanks for listening to my my uh, gravelly voice and everything. Hope you like the haul. Um, if you ever get to an Ollie's, man, go to an Ollie's. They're awesome. I wish I had one closer by, but I don't. So I got to wait whenever we do our traveling. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys later. Bye.